Hey everyone and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. Today I'm going to be talking about Aussie slang. Now like most teenagers in the UK, I spent a lot of time watching Neighbours. So I thought that I would be able to easily rely on those years and years worth of watching as Neighbours and that will get me through. I remember when I was watching Neighbours and listening to some of the lingo and thinking, yeah, surely that's not a real word. It can't be. And since moving here, I realised that Neighbours missed out a lot. So, in order to save you the embarrassment of a conversation down the line, if ever you're coming to Australia, I've compiled a list of a couple of words that I think will help to clarify some confusion, should it ever happen to you too. So the first word, chuck. And no, that's not some northern twang on the word chuck. It took me a little while to work out what chuck was. It was only when I went to a barbecue a few years ago that I realised that a chuck actually meant chicken. Okay, this one, potentially embarrassing. Next word, thongs. So if you ever visit someone in Australia and you get to the front door and they ask you to take off your thongs, don't panic. They're not asking you to remove your underwear. You don't even begin to start doing that. In Australia, thongs, means flip-flops, or if you're from New Zealand, thongs equals jandals. If you were to visit someone in the UK and you were asked, should I take off my thongs? You're probably gonna get a slap in the face because it means really skimpy little underwear or G-strings, thongs. <laughs> Next up, a little classic, servo. If ever you're asked if you wanna pull into a servo, it just means service station. And there's a little bit of a pattern with these sorts of words which I'll explain later. Servo, service station. Makes sense. Okay, next up. Esty. So what's an esty? It is not a little Inuit tract in the middle of the Australian desert. If you're from New Zealand, you will recognise an esty as a chilli bin, or if you're from the UK, an esty is a cool box. It's a box where you put the items you need to keep refrigerated. Simple, esty. Okay, who doesn't know what a ute is? Ute. Utility vehicle or flatbed truck to the rest of the world. Ute. Utility vehicle. Ute. Okay, this next one is a personal favourite of mine. Steamer. If you're from the UK, you'll know what a steamer is. A couple of weeks ago, and I was at work, somebody asked me if I had a steamer. And I just kind of stretched my head and kind of just wondered what the hell this person was asking me. Did I have a steamer? Whereas? And then I realised that steamer in Australia actually means full-sized white suit with arms and legs. In the UK, steamer means a foo. Big difference. You don't want to get caught out with that one, guys. In the UK, it's just white suit. If you're in Australia and someone asks you if you cook, they're not asking for you to jump in the back of the ute and go rob the local bank. They're asking you if you're unwell. Are you sick? Are you crook? Crook. It's not short for animal. <laughs> it's not short for criminal. It's not slang for criminal. Crook. Okay, next up is now one of my like top three favorite words to use. This word, goon. There's literally no semblance of the meaning of this word to what it actually is. So a goon in the UK is essentially somebody that you would laugh at or make fun of. You're just a goon. Here in Australia, it's just a box of wine. Just a box of wine, a goon. Hey, let's go spit a goon. In New Zealand, you would just call it a cask. Box of wine, cask, goon. It's all the same. New favourite word, love it. Honestly, who makes up these words? Next up. And I'm ashamed to say that having lived in Australia now for 18 months, it's only the last couple of days did I realise what this was. But we've got, it says snag, not shag, snag. So a snag, everyone, means sausage, sausage. Want a snag? Want a sausage? Snag, sausage. Yeah, I can totally see the, uh, the resemblance. Thanks, neighbours. I already knew this one. In fact, I used to spend many, many times dreaming about patching Billy Kennedy myself. Patch. Maybe short for passion? Who knows? It's just a cool word in itself. Patch. 
any UK and everywhere else in the word, you just want to say kiss. Not down here. Do not. No, I'm not making it up. No, I haven't just put some random letters on a whiteboard. Duna is a real word. And here down under, it means duvet or quilt or blanket. Duna, classic. Totally see it. Hello, Jessa. Literally, it took a long, long, long time upon arriving within the Southern Hemisphere because this word is used in New Zealand and Australia. It took a really long time to work out what the hell Manchester was. Now I know Manchester is a large town in England, I know that. And I know that you Kiwis and you Aussies just love your Coronation Street, which I'll never understand, but hey ho. Manchester, here, refers to bed linen, bed sheets, pillowcases, all that kind of stuff that you would find in haberdashery. Manchester, bed sheets. So you go to get your Manchester from your local department store. Gromit. No, not the thing you stick in your ear. Gromit means no surfer. Of course it does. Suck. I've never heard of a suck before, but apparently you use it all over the world. But I remember once being called a suck when I was living in New Zealand, and suck means you big baby. Stop being such a suck. I like it. So basically, there are heaps more, but I'm going to bore you if I carry on going on. They're just a couple of basic everyday words that you need to know to be able to get on board with the, the locals. If in doubt, and you're really unsure, but you want to fit in, essentially any word that you come across, just stick O at the end of it. That's what these guys do. Servo, arvo, afternoon. Arvo, avocado. Ambo, ambulance. Traino, right, the list goes on. It's kind of like Welsh, where you stick EO at the end of everything. Trainio, servio. <laughs> it's just an O. So there you're stuck and you need to converse with the locals. If you can't remember any of those words, just remember, you'll always be safe with a no. And don't get your steamers mixed up because that could be potentially quite embarrassing. So thanks for watching this relatively short and sweet video. And if you can think of any of the words that I've missed out, let me know because you might save me from a potentially embarrassing situation. Hopefully I've saved you from a potentially embarrassing situation.